Today I want to walk you through the basics of the Blender interface. My goal is that by the end of this video, you'll be able to navigate the program's basic functions in preparation for your own projects. If you haven't downloaded Blender yet, go to blender.org download and click the download link. Pause this video and return once you've installed it. Okay, once Blender's installed, open it. You should come to this introduction panel asking to set your basic preferences. I'm shooting this video with all the default settings, so I'd suggest the same, especially if you're new. After you pass that preference screen, Blender should show its splash screen. This is pretty typical. You have file types you can open on the left. The only difference between these file types that are shown is the layout of the file. Fundamentally, they are all the same Blender program. On the right, you see recent files. Each can be handy if you regularly work on a specific project. For now, we're just going to create a new general file. So now we're in the program. By default, every new Blender scene comes preloaded with three objects, a cube, a camera, and a light. Most of the time, you'll delete these, and we'll do that now. You can see that the viewport takes the bulk of the screen's real estate. The viewport is where most of the work is done. The viewport is also where you'll preview animations and textures before you render them. You can navigate the viewport by zooming, rotating, and panning around the screen. To zoom, you can scroll on your mouse wheel or hold control and the middle mouse button while dragging your mouse. To rotate around your scene, you can hold your middle mouse button while dragging your mouse. To pan around your scene, you can hold shift middle mouse button while dragging your mouse. You can also use these icons at the top right of your viewport to navigate through your scene. But I recommend using the shortcuts I showed for efficiency. Blender heavily uses hotkeys, so I recommend taking notes on them until they're memorized. Adding components to your scene is very easy. To add anything, start by using the hotkey Shift A. A list will show you everything you can add to your scene. The most common things you will likely add to your projects are meshes or objects, lights, and cameras. Let's add a mesh to our scene. I'll add a monkey, or Suzanne, as the Blender community calls it. There are a couple of basic transformations you can make to any objects right off the bat. Those include moving, rotating, and scaling. There are several ways to move your object. You can use this tool in the top left hand of the viewport called the Grab Tool. You can see that it places three arrows at the center of the object. The red arrow moves the object on the x-axis of our virtual world. The green arrow moves the object on the y-axis, and the blue arrow moves our monkey on the z-axis. You can also move your object with a hotkey G. If we want to move our monkey more precisely, we can string a couple of hotkeys together. For instance, say I want to move Suzanne one meter to the right on the x-axis. I would hit G, then X, then 1. Rotating objects is similar. You can click the Rotate tool from the top left panel and notice our arrows are replaced by a spherical tool. If you click and drag any of these loops, the object will rotate in that direction. The hotkey for the Rotate tool is R. Now how would you rotate Suzanne exactly 68 degrees along the Z axis? If you remember from the previous example, you would hit R, Z, and 68. The same is true for the scale tool. If we click on it in the top left-hand panel, the rotation tool is replaced by the scale handles. The hotkey for the scale tool is S. If we want to scale this monkey to twice its size on the y-axis, we would type S, then Y, then two. You could also scale the monkey evenly by two by typing S, then two. Let's delete Suzanne. You can delete any object within Blender by pressing the X key. So far, we've talked about manipulating a completed model within Blender. How would you manipulate a primitive object to make your own model, though? Let's add a basic cube so I can show you. Remember to press Shift-A to pull up that Add Object menu. Under Mesh, let's choose a cube. Up until now, we've been in Object Mode. Object mode allows you to manipulate entire meshes or objects. If you want to edit the actual makeup of an object, you'll have to go into edit mode. You can change modes by going up to the drop down menu at the top left hand side of the window. You can switch to edit mode from any mode you're currently in 
by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. In edit mode, you can see that every object comprises of vertices, or points, edges, or two connected vertices, and faces, or three or more connected edges. You can select points, edges, and faces and manipulate them in edit mode just like we did in object mode. Up in the top left-hand side of our window, we can choose whether we want to select vertices, edges, or faces. And then we can come over to the left-hand column to use various tools to manipulate the mesh. We'll look at most of these tools in a later video, but pay attention to these three in the top left-hand side of our window. We have the same move, rotate, and scale tools that we had in object mode, and we can use one or all of them to manipulate our object more precisely. Before we end the video, let's look at the Blender project panel. Organization within the program can speed up your workflow tremendously. Every time you add an object, light, camera, curve, etc. to your project, it will show up in the project panel. Blender has collections, essentially folders to add or organize your file or scene elements however you want. For instance, if I had several lights, cameras, and meshes in my scene, I could organize all three of these components in separate collections to keep them organized. You can then rename collections. You can hide entire collections from being seen in your viewport or the render. You can even turn off collections while working on other scene elements to improve the program's performance. We could have covered so much more in this video, but I just wanted to give you enough to get rolling and not so much to overwhelm you. If you want updates on future videos about Blender Basics, like and subscribe, and we'll get moving. Thanks, guys. Bye.